Hello, welcome back to Cardinal Science. Today we're looking at the Edexcel IGCC Chemistry 2017 specification points 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17. 1.14, .1 know what is meant by the terms atom and molecule. 1.15, know the structure of an atom in terms of the positions, relative masses and relative charges of subatomic particles. 1.16, Know what is meant by the terms atomic number, mass number, isotopes, and relative atomic mass, or AR. 1.17. Be able to calculate the relative atomic mass, AR, of an element from isotopic abundances. 1.14. Know what is meant by the terms atoms and molecules. So an atom is the smallest part of an element. It consists of electrons orbiting a nucleus of protons and neutrons. In this diagram, I've got the blue circles as the protons and the orange as the neutrons. We have two electrons in the shells. Okay, this is a helium atom. So within a pure sample of helium, the smallest part of this that you can break down to will be these atoms here. I've shown you three ways of representing this here. One as its atomic diagram. One, as you might see it, just represented by a little circle labelled HE for helium with a symbol, or you might just write HE. A molecule is more than one atom chemically bonded together. They can be the same atom or they can be different atoms. In this case, I've showed you a hydrogen molecule. So here you can see that each hydrogen atom has got one proton in the middle, those blue circles. Okay, the electron shells are overlapping because it's a covalent bond we'll go into that a lot later and you've got two electrons there in green another way to represent this is as i've shown here two hydrogen with little circles overlapping each other or h2 which indicates that it's a hydrogen molecule not a hydrogen atom because there are two hydrogen atoms in this molecule 1.15 you have to know the position the mass and the charge of protons electrons and neutrons this table is the best way to show this. There are very common exam questions where you have to fill in gaps from this table. It's important you memorize everything here. So to start with, this is how I like to think about atoms. Every atom has a pen in it, okay? That means it has protons, electrons, and neutrons. So we'll start with the protons. The protons are in the nucleus, in the center, like I showed in the previous diagrams. They have a relative mass, of one. Now that relative is referring to the mass of it compared to other neut neutrons and protons. Okay. Because its mass in kilograms is an extremely tricky number to work with. So we use a relative mass. And again, it's relative charge. So it's charged when compared to electrons and neutrons is plus one. Electrons are found in the shells, like I showed in the previous diagram, orbiting that nucleus. Its relative mass is nearly 2,000 times smaller than protons and neutrons. It's 1 over 1836. You will sometimes see this written as 1 over 2,000, but the more precise figure is 1 over 1836. Its relative charge is minus 1. So it's got the same amount of charge as a proton does, but the opposite way. Okay, so it's negative. And the neutron, and the way I like to think of this is neutron or neutral. Hope you remember that its charge is in fact 0. Okay. You find those in the nucleus, they have the same mass as protons, so it's a relative mass of one, but its relative charge, because it's neutral, is zero. For specification point 1.16, you need to know what atomic number and mass number mean. Now, when we show elements, we almost always show them with our symbol. Now, over here, I've, I've represented this with an X. That X indicates that it could be any element symbol, okay? Now, above it, you'll see its mass number, and below it, you'll see its atomic number, just like you see over here, for example, with our helium, which has a mass number of four and the atomic number of two. Now, we'll start with the atomic number because that's the most important one, because the atomic number tells you the number of protons, and the number of protons determines what atom you actually have. Two protons means helium, one proton means hydrogen, three protons means lithium, and so on. If you added a proton to a hydrogen atom, it would become a helium atom. Next is the mass number. The mass number is the mass of the entire atom. Okay, It's the amount of protons added to the amount of neutrons. 
Electrons are such a small mass that we ignore them. Using the mass number and the atomic number, there are some calculations that we can do. I already told you the atomic number tells you how many protons you've got. And I told you that the mass number is the number of protons added to the number of neutrons. This means that if you wanted to figure out the number of neutrons that you have, you would just take away the atomic number from the mass number. Now you can also use this information to figure out how many electrons there are in an atom of an element. And that's because atoms of an element are always neutrally charged. Their overall charge is zero, which means if something has two protons, which are both positive, it will therefore need to have two electrons, which are negative, to be neutral. This means that we can figure out the number of electrons that the atom has because it's the same number as the number of protons. Now, here are some examples below. So there's a pen in every atom, and for each one, we're going to figure out how many protons, electrons, and neutrons there are. So first, we can figure out the number of protons for helium here on the left. It's got two protons because its atomic number is two. Its mass number is four, which means we take away two from four to get the number of neutrons, which is also two. And the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons, which is two as well. Let's do lithium. Mass number seven, atomic number three. We've got three protons, which means that we therefore also have three electrons. And because our mass number is seven, we do seven take away three equals four, and that gives us our number of neutrons. Two more examples. Feel free to pause the video and have a try before I go ahead. Now, Na is for sodium. Its mass number is 23, and its atomic number is 11, which means it has 11 protons. It will have 11 electrons, therefore. And 23 take away 11 is 12, so it has 12 neutrons. Finally, Ca, calcium. Its mass number is 40, and its atomic number is 20. So it's got 20 protons, 20 electrons, and 40 take away 20, which is also 20 neutrons. So there are two more definitions that you need for this specification point. Relative atomic mass okay, is the weighted average mass of an atom of an element compared to 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. This is the same as the mass number. Now, the fact that this is a weighted average will become clear later when we start looking at isotopic abundances a couple slides forward. But that's the definition that you want to memorize. This second definition here is another one you should memorize, and it is regarding isotopes. Isotopes are atoms with the same atomic number, the same number of protons, but different mass numbers or different numbers of neutrons. I've got an example for you here. On the left, we have a hydrogen atom. It's got one proton, one electron, and no neutrons. Its mass number, therefore, is one. Its atomic number is one. And there it is. Now, next to it, we have an isotope of hydrogen. It's actually called deuterium. Okay, And this one has a mass number of two. It's got an atomic number of one, which means it's still hydrogen, which, which means now it's got one proton, one electron, but it's got a mass of two, therefore it has a number of neutrons as one. These two atoms are isotopes of each other. They have the same atomic number, as you can see, but different mass numbers. Okay, here's a calculation you're going to want to practice doing, but it is simple once you get the hang of it. How do you calculate relative atomic masses? I mentioned before about the relative atomic mass being a weighted average. Now, this has got to do with naturally occurring isotopes. Okay, Most elements, if you look at the periodic table, have mass numbers that are whole numbers. However, there are a few that don't. It isn't possible to have half of a proton or half of a neutron. But what's going on here is that they have naturally occurring isotopes. The most common ones you'll see on the periodic table are going to be chlorine and copper for this. Okay, what this means, what naturally occurring isotopes means, is that the certain percentage of atoms within any naturally occurring chlorine, in this example, will be of the heavy isotope. So here I'm showing you, you've got chlorine 3517, right, this is the main version, okay, and then you've got chlorine 3717. Same number of protons, same number of electrons, but it's got two more neutrons, so it's slightly heavier. 
Here's where the abundance comes in. If you were to take any naturally occurring cloud of chlorine gas, 75% of the atoms would be chlorine 35 and 25% of the atoms would be chlorine 37. Now, if we're going to do experiments using chlorine, especially naturally occurring chlorine, we need to be very precise about the masses that we're using. So we use a weighted average based on the abundances. Here's how you do it. Step one, you multiply the mass and the abundance of each of the isotopes. So we were to take, for example, 35, and we're going to multiply that by 75 on this side. And on this side, on the right, we're going to take 37 and multiply that by 25. Okay, what we then do is we add those two numbers together, as you can see down here in step two. Once we've done that, we divide the whole thing by 100, and that gives us our weighted average, in this case, of 35.5. Okay, here's another example. Pause the video here and see if you can figure out the relative atomic mass of these two isotopes of copper. I've highlighted the numbers that you need to use. Okay, so let's go. Now step one, if you remember, was to multiply the mass of each isotope by its abundance. So we would do 63 multiplied by 69, and we would do 65 multiplied by 31. We would then add these two numbers together and divide by 100. And what we would get is 63.6. Now you might see on the periodic table that you see 63.5 here, and that's because of rounding. How is this content examined? For 1.14, you need to be able to define an atom or molecule. So you might be asked to just write down the definitions as I showed earlier on in the video. In addition to this, you might be asked to recognize atoms or molecules from a diagram. See here where I've got a few different representations of that. Over here, we've got two hydrogen atoms bonded together, so you'd recognize that as a molecule, as compared to this helium atom on the right, with just one atom, therefore it's an atom, not a molecule. Otherwise, you might not get symbol notation as we have here, but just colored spheres. Now, we indicate that each colored sphere is a particular element. So these two blue spheres overlapping here, they are a molecule and it's an elemental molecule. So this could be something like hydrogen or oxygen, H2 or O2 or N2, for example. This next one in the middle, it's a single blue sphere by itself, therefore it's an atom. And this one on the right is still a molecule, okay? It's obviously got two different atoms making it up. This could be something like carbon monoxide. Now for 1.15, you might be asked to fill in the table very much like this. The, all of the gaps could be empty, or they could be an arrangement of gaps, as I've demonstrated here. We'll work through these together. So you've got PEN, so that's protons, electrons, and neutrons. This first box, the electron box, under position would therefore be shells. The relative mass would be for the neutron, it's going to be one. And we would just fill in this last box, relative charge for the electron, which is going to be minus one. You'd have to do something along those lines in your exam. Examining point 1.16 tends to be in relation to interpreting symbol information from a periodic table, i.e saying the number of protons that an element has or the number of neutrons. The definition of isotopes comes up regularly and I suggest you use the definition that I showed earlier in the video, likewise for relative atomic mass. For 1.17, you'll get questions like I've demonstrated below. Bromine exists as two isotopes, Br79 and Br81. Their abundances in nature are both 50%. Calculate the relative atomic mass. You use the steps that I've outlined in this video multiplying the mass of each one by its abundance, adding them together and dividing by 100. This is quite a common question. And if you do it the way I've demonstrated here, you'll get full marks. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this content helpful. If you liked it, please give us a like and subscribe to look out for more videos in the future. Thanks again.